Okay, we are back to, for our second session, which is talking about my, how many did I end up with, MJ? We're talking NAM things here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're both nine. counting, you count. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, my top 10. Yeah, <laughs> top I ten. Say, you call me top ten, and I'm like, "What the deuce? Are you? Are you? Uh, did you have them in order that, that I had them, or, or? Well, I did folders for pictures, so the folders for pictures then sorted by alphabetical. But I can go back to the thing. You can go through that order, and I can just bring the pictures. Okay, because so. let's let's actually go from the uh, bottom to the top because we've already talked about a couple of them at the top. Just tell me the name, and I'll bring. Uh, them we're going to start with the eternal lighting. So, gang, what we're going to be doing with this segment of the show tonight is we're going to be talking about. I think it's about eighteen. 18, 19 things, I believe, here that we're going to talk about that were things that were at NAM that that were little little moments that said, hey, that's going to be cool. That's something that we're going to be paying attention to in the future. So we're going to go through the list. And there's one item that as I was going and, and kind of getting the links for all these different things, we can share these links. And we'll put that in the description when we separate these videos. It will not go on the, the, the main video from tonight, but tomorrow you'll see this segment up by itself. That's when you will see and get, the, get all the links here. But yeah, one of you know the one item that that I did not see it now, but if I would have, I would have loved to have seen that, and we'll share that one at the end when we we have a few minutes. So, MJ, do you have that eternal eternal lighting, that Echo Mate? What you're looking at right there, ladies and gentlemen, this is from Eternal Lighting. This is their their IR Remote Control Plus. It's a little bit larger than the remote control that they have been using, and it has a few more presets and such, and it has the ability to control their their different lighting fixtures, and it, it hooks up with something called their Echo Mate. And our Echo Mate is basically, and I believe it's running on a Wi-Fi signal, and they can get there. Oh, great, you've got that too. Nice. It's it's. The ability with this little device to control, it takes that signal from that remote and then it sends it out to their wireless DMX lighting. And it can send out to a variety of wireless DMX lighting, DMX lights, not only um, Eternal's lights, but I believe it's using uh, w, uh, WDMX also. So it can then transmit that information. What's really cool is in his little demo video he did at NAM. He was standing several hundred feet away, and he was able to control the lights in his booth, and he had things programmed and such. So it's really, I think, for those who are doing uplighting and you want to have some cool, uh, cool things going on with that, it's really something you want to check out. So again, we'll put the links in the description below on that for the video I tomorrow. To share that video, but I, I didn't know how well it would share uh, with the with the transmission. Yeah, that's that's that'd be tough because you're going across twice. Okay, let's see. Next one was uh, Monster. The Superstar Blaster Portable Bluetooth Boombox. By the way, this came out uh, during CES. It came out during CES, and I think it's still... I don't think they're they're shipping, or, or they're not actually for sale right. yet. But right. this this is a cool little... And, and Monster had actually quite a few Bluetooth devices there. And what's interesting is when we went through the first time on Thursday morning, I, I was there just fairly early, that this was one of the highlights and that was the new thing in the room. By the time we came back, I think Friday morning, there were like four more sound systems, little mini sound systems that weren't there that literally were delivered by UPS from the manufacturer, manufacturer, wherever that is, whoever that is. But this little Bluetooth is a high-powered Bluetooth boombox, and it, they have this, this boombox in the room. You know, here's the old version, and here's the new version. Monster's got some pretty cool things, a, wire, a waterproof speaker. If you follow us on Instagram, you saw that. There's some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, let's LD Systems is next with the Maui 5. The Maui 5, for some of you who have seen the video, you mentioned that, oh, it looks like it's kind of a, a, a Bose Compact, an answer or a, a, a takeoff from that. Yes, in many ways, it's, it's very similar in capability. I think the difference you might have is I think the Maui, uh, that's the curve, the Maui. Oh. Yep. Is that the right one or wrong one? No, I've got the we've got the wrong one. Did I give you did I give you the wrong one? The Maui Five is a rounded base one. I have to go grab it. Yeah, that's well, I can I can talk about it. Maui Five. It's it has the subwoofer in the bottom, and then of course it's got the the stick of speakers going up. But of course it's similar in the, to the Bose Compact that it only has the drivers in the upper part of that. It has the bag that goes with it to, to haul everything and everything goes together very nicely. The cool part. The cool part is, I don't know who that is. Why is someone calling me? It's probably one of those it's probably one of those those companies that call and say, "Hey, I see you're going to the convention. You need to book a room." 
Yeah, I love that. special. Yeah, it is. It's very, very special. Yeah, look at yeah, the recall. The, but the Maui 5, uh, LD Systems, a nice little compact sound system, which is really kind of cool. You could do the ceremony. You can do the, your dinner. You can do some different things with it. It's small. There it is right there. Easy to use, and it's really got a lot of functionality built into the back of it for, say, if you were doing some, if you were having an instrumentalist doing uh, some music during the ceremony. They can plug right in and be able to have some nice quality sound. We actually got to hear these a little bit. They sounded good. Are they a big enough system to do a lot of stuff with? No. You know, I, I'm one who would, I, I like to have more functionality and, and diversity in my sound system, so I would probably go with one of the bigger, bigger ones. But for someone who's looking for something small, quick, that you can basically tuck under your arm and go, the Maui 5 would definitely be an option. How big is that compared to, like, the, uh, the stand-up uh, bows? Very, very similar in size. Okay, cool. Very similar in size. Um, guys, if you, and, and for those of you watching, I, I apologize. I'm not really. I'm looking at my notes and such, so we're not following the chat as much as we typically would during this segment. And, and if you guys want to just hang on to questions and such, till we get to closer to the end, that would be awesome because then we'll be able to see them. Yeah, Ian, uh, I'm going for the waffles first, so I'm just saying it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> for the chat. Go ahead, John. Smithson okay. Martin next with the emulator KS32. This one was tough to find any images of beyond the ones we already I have. got you covered. But I figured you found I something. Boatloads because the thing is with this, go ahead, you talk about it, and I'm going to then show you more as we go along. This little guy, they had it hooked up to a, a Mac laptop. What this is, is is if you're familiar with Mac World, gang, having a touch screen hooked up to your Mac is very, very difficult. There aren't many out there. The KS32 will allow you to control your DJ gear through your laptop, give you a touch sensitive screen there. That's a 32 inch screen, nice, large size. And what's really kind of a neat feature with this is that there's different controller skins that they have available. Now, there we go. We're looking at a, at a Newmark right, one right there. The version but, of the Newmark four tracks. Is that a four track? I can't, I can't see the middle of it. And so we have, uh, that is the NS seven skin. And I believe that's the pioneer DDJRX skin. So what it allows all, you to all do... the same unit, but you can make it look like all of that. Yep, it's just on the side of it, and I guess we can't see that on the side of it. But on the left side, there's a spot there where you can go click and you can change it from one to the next. And yeah, none of these are really showing that. So that yeah. way, you can go with a controller, you can move to a controller, you know, from a controller that you're used to, to that, and then you can, you know, if you like it, you can stay with it, or you can try other things and get the idea of what it can do for you. Very, very cool... And it's very sensitive uh, when, when they were hooking it up and such. Uh, it, it just really is nice. A couple of things, though, with it. You have to have a modern computer. You can't be using an old four- or five-year-old computer because it needs to have a graphics card. It needs to have the faster processor because it's doing it's rendering that whole page or you know, getting the video out there, and then it's also managing that touchscreen. It's going to take up two ports on your computer. It's going to take up your a USB port, and it's going to take up the uh, the Thunderbolt port because you need to drive the video, and you're, you're also using that USB t sensitivity for the touchscreen. For those of you who don't know, it's made by the company made this. If you've been to any expos or anything, uh, they've made it friendlier and more usable by the average person. And then the price is down. I mean, I, this particular unit with that big emulator, they were looking at, I'm, I want to say, five to 8,000 MJ. Does that sound? For the emulator? Yeah, the big one, yeah. The big one. No, yeah. I think it starts at 15. Oh, geez. Yeah, it, it's I'm inexpensive. Only that we went to, we, we, you and I, or you, me and somebody looked at it. Um, yeah, it's on their website. They've got the prices for all the difference, but they're very expensive. And the new one isn't cheap, but it's also, you know, if it can, you know, the controllers and different things that it can do could be, uh, you know, price wise for what it, it, it's right there. So <sighs> you didn't see did, any price. Did they even say the price for that one? 2400 can... 24 is what I've seen on that. Little thing? Yep, that little thing. It's a, again, it's a touch screen. It's a 32 inch touchscreen, and maybe maybe that's what it was an early uh, map pricing, and it's going to be different than that. They haven't s talked much about, it, and that occasionally happens where they throw out a big number, and it's kind of like the the techniques that they're trying to come out with, and they're saying they're four thousand. I was talking to many people at Nam, and they're thinking that that's going to come in. The twelve hundred is going to be coming in at uh, there we go, yeah, fifteen for the big one. But they're talking that they they're thinking the techniques twelve hundred are going to come in around at the twenty five hundred dollar mark. Yeah, so. It's still. We'll talk about that on another show. Yep, yep. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, the Vimoda, up next with the Crossfade Wireless. Do you say it Vimoda or Vmoda? Because I've heard it both ways. Um, Do you, know? you know, I'll have to think of what the, what they rep. 
Yeah. I think the Vomoda is what I believe their rep said when I interviewed. Because I, I interviewed, uh, I want to say Dale. Anyway, I, I interviewed the uh, the one of the, the guys at the booth. But what the, for a lot of us who've been to the different DJ conventions, you have seen uh, the Crossfade 100s is kind of their their main their main one. I've got a pair actually of of well, I think it's empty. I must have them. I must have them somewhere else. Yes, this is this is an empty clamshell from Vomoto headphones. <laughs> Sorry, but the, what they did is they wanted to come out with a wireless Bluetooth headphones that would give you the same sound quality or a similar sound quality to the Crossfade 100s, and they feel that they have been able to achieve that, even though it's it's using a Bluetooth signal. That they've tuned these a little bit differently, and they're good to go. The battery is in one of the ear cups, and I I want to say that the the runtime on that was. A, over eight hours. I don't remember exactly what the number was, but it, it was to me. It was like I, I in my head, I said to me that it could be running all weekend for multiple shows. It. Uh, what is the what is the adapter? That it's is it Bluetooth thing from like a phone, or is it? Can you put an adapter in your headphones as you DJ and then use them as wireless DJ headphones? Has anybody talked about that? It's it's a it's a receiving, so it would be coming off. That's a great point. It would be coming off a phone because there aren't any boards right now that are receiving Bluetooth capability. Bluetooth might be able to come, I suppose, directly from the laptop, but then that's going to change your queuing. That's so that would be my only thought is if it lags because yeah. I could see them pu pulling out a dongle with a quarter inch, you know, that's coming out of your headphones and let the dongle speak to the to the headphones as a, as a you know a, a sender and a receiver. And it, it can do that. You can wire directly yeah. in there also. So I wonder yeah, if the but, if you know what I'm saying is a Bluetooth dongle that you just shove in the headphone slot. Oh, that, oh yeah, yeah, that transmits it. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. They did not say anything about that. But now that you mention that, yeah, that's not that's going to gonna be... make people jump. They do that. Not you know, no longer choking yourself with a cord or like I've done a thousand times, walk away and forget the headphones around my my neck and. <laughs> oh, exactly. That would be that would be really cool. There you go. There's an idea for you guys out there, Vomoda. Put a transmitter for the idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. What do we have? We're up to Fender. Fender this had a surprising one. So you caught me with this one. Yeah. This. This is. This was. Uh, as I went to through the Fender room. Of course, they've got guitars and and all their different things. But they came out with the Fortis. The F. Uh, this is the 15 BT. This is their powered speaker. They've got a 15. They have a 12. They had a prototype for a 10. And from the Fender rep was basically saying they're not sure if they're going to make the 10 or not. Really, it just was the scaled down version in the prototype. When you see the actual video that we did on these, you'll see that uh, you'll see that 10 inch. They also have subwoofers. I believe they had a 15 and an 18 inch subwoofer for going below this. They were playing some music through these, and they sound they sound very good. I was I was really surprised. Uh, high high power in this. I don't I don't have the specs and such right in front of me, unfortunately, but they were a higher power something that you would use as you know your main main cabinets. It was interesting. I, I was surprised. I didn't expect Fender to jump into the full range PA world, you know, because they've been doing guitar amps and we've seen them in the Passport systems, but not not full range speakers. So that was interesting. Uh, let's continue on. I also saw that because you can see the little rubber stands on it. People talking about it as a stage monitor too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that that was. And that, that, I, if they would they, they would have had them laid out as stage monitors, that probably would have made more sense as a Fender device to me. But they were set up yeah. kind of like a DJ display there, which is somewhat yeah. surprising. You see the up at the top and the bottom on each side, yeah, the rubber feet. Yep, that's that's for using it as a monitor. And they also had fly points, if I'm not mistake, mistaken, on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Let's keep going. We are about halfway through. We're up to Blizzard Lighting next. Now, Blizzard Lighting last year had introduced a light called their Snake Eyes. The Snake Eyes is basically looks like a a a big die that has a one spot on each each face of the die and the edges light up. Well, what they introduced at NAM 2016 is the Snake Eyes Mini. And if you get a chance to check out the video, it's kind of kind of a cute video and we'll have the link into the below this. And what that is is they they you're seeing it on the washing machine. Uh, good good uh, screen grab there, G, MJ. What they did is it's, I couldn't get any better quality in, in the hurry that I Yeah. Was doing. So what they did is in the video. That shows the full, full to the mini. 
They yeah they took they took uh, one of the guys from a blizzard. He comes in there and he's he's uh, eating a hot dog and he slops ketchup on the the uh, the large snake eyes and then he's got to clean it. So he throws it in the washing machine. Then he pulls it out and throws it in the dryer. And then when he opens the dryer, it's shrunk, you know, because the dryer shrinks everything. Snake Eyes Mini, I think, is going to be kind of a cool light. I, I like the Snake Eyes effect, and I mentioned this um, to a couple of, of c- people who are going to be buying some Snake Eyes. I think for a, a wedding DJ, it probably would be something because you don't see the same crowd you know, on a regular basis. As a school dance DJ, I think it's one of those lights that's so unique and so, I'm going to say, semi-unforgettable that the first time you would go through the schools, I think it would be a great light. I think it's one that the kids wouldn't, after, you, I don't think I'd go use it more than twice at a school. Because I think it's such a a unique fixture that the kids would be like, oh, been there, seen that. Compared to some moving head fixtures where it has, and, and granted, you can program it with the DMX and, and make it look differently, but you wouldn't be using the, a lot of the capabilities of it. So, great light. It's going to give you some effects, but I don't know if it's something that you would use year in and year out if you're a high school dance DJ. Uh, Electro Voice. Now, Electro Voice, this is kind of interesting. Um, their big thing at the show this year was they, they had a nice sound room, uh, and we had a, we shot a nice video on that where they set up the, all their speakers, and they had lighting in the ceiling, and it was really cool. It was just on, around the walls. But the big thing that they were talking about at the show wasn't so much the speakers, which they were demoing, was their new ND series of microphones. The microphones basically have a variety of different microphones. On the right, you're seeing the instrument microphones. It's the four and the right. The four and the left are the microphones that are meant for what we do. You've got uh, you've got the one on the very left, which is a kind of a general purpose. Then the second one is general purpose with a switch. The third one is starting to be more of a cardioid pattern. And the fourth one is for those times when you're in a very loud environment where you are going to be out there and on, you know, really on stage in front of, of the speakers and everything and where feedback could really become a problem. That fourth microphone is more expensive, of course, because you're getting more expensive as you go. But that microphone will allow you to be in a very loud environment in front of your speakers and really not have any problem with feedback. So very, very monodirectional. Very much so. Very much so. You really have to be on that element for that one to be heard. But for singers in loud environments or even DJs who are in situations where you're into that microphone in front of the speakers and leading the crowd, it's it's going to be a great option and you're not going to have to worry about the feedback. So. There's also something else that EVU is supposed to be coming out with, and we've heard, we had heard rumors about it, and so we're going to talk about it just a little bit. EV was was working on, and this is from the grapevine. I've not heard this from EV themselves, but they supposedly are working on a Bose type of speaker, meaning it's a line array. Yes, that's what I've heard now through the through the grapevine. I may be wrong. Bowl or their new line, their Bose they, new bendable line array. They were not the not the bendable line array. They were that EV was working on something that would be similar to like the Bose L1. Okay, is what I've heard. Now they did introduce new line array things, but it was you know concert line array. So maybe there's some maybe that's what the the story is. But I've heard it from a few different sources that they were surprised that I didn't hear about it and them. So we'll we'll have to see if that was just a a rumor and there's nothing behind it, or if you know in in six months all of a sudden or next fall we hear ho ho, they have a high powered version of the Bose. I believe that, that that makes sense because if the Bose, believe it or not, very few people know the Bose were originally created to be stage monitors for a band. So there's going to be four of them in each corner of the stage pointing towards the center so that the band can always hear what's going on. Mm-hmm. And they've then been adapted into a, an out broadcast thing. You know, with EV being, you know, looking at them and Fender, different ones that are about, you know, live instrument stuff. Wouldn't be surprised if they come out with that. Makes sense to me, even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Cause that would be you know, that the way EV's really been stepping up their game with their speakers in the last few generations with ETX and EKX and such. If they did it, that would be a, a, a neat, a neat cabinet. Okay, uh, let's jump to Newmark. We've got the CD Mix USB is our next product that, uh, and that that unfortunately has a product guide PDF that uh, that it came from, but the. Nope, because I oh, you, opted for disc jockey news you, special. Did you do this? Uh, this was part of last week's thing. My 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 blast outs. I did a bunch of stuff like this where I made it special just for us. Nice, nice. Well, you did a wonderful job. Cool thing about the CD mix. CD mix USB is one of the 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 CD mix earlier generation. This has been around. I think I think uh, Chris was saying fifteen or more years. I know people that have them and use them even. Yeah, exactly. I've got one of the early ones that had the RCA outs, the two, and it's it was very simple. 
it, it did its job and it still works. It's still sitting probably on a shelf over there. It's, they just do there. They just work. What this is gives you the ability to do is you can play from CD. Which you see your CD players down there, and you can also go from thumb drives. So you can have your music on that. You can go in and through folders. You can access it. You've got a little bit of a jog wheel for uh, manipulating your songs and such. Uh, I've got some microphone control there. And the part that I like the most about it now compared to what I have over there is that it has XLR balanced out. When I had it, it did not have that capability. So it really becomes, for those who, who need a backup player, it becomes that device where you can have, actually have it as a backup. That's and what my friend uses his for at weddings. It's just sitting there as a backup. He has the older one, you know. Yep. That is strictly there. And he'll, he even, believe it or not, burns CDs of the essential songs for, like, you know, the intros and stuff onto a CD just to have them in case something dies. He yep, can, you know that's his back, which is smart. A lot of very, work, but it's really smart. Very much so. That's a, a great idea for for a backup, and, it, and it's not. I mean, the price of those things are just cheap, mm -hmm. inexpensive. No, I don't. Want, they aren't cheap, but they're, they're. You're not. It's not a huge investment. Nice okay. controller. Yeah, for surely. Okay, let's let's kind of zip through the last ones here. ADJ Airstream Y. Wi-Fi pack. Arnaldo talked a little bit about this last night and how he's going to rewire his house and bedroom for with lights. <laughs> I, I had a conversation with someone right after that about this, you know, now, and I'm thinking, oh, dude, I've got to do this. Back in the day, we used to have a device from ADJ that was eight little red switches to turn lights on, and it had kind of a data cable that would go to the, the power pack. Well, now it's all wireless. You can control it with your cell phone. You can do a lot of cool things with timers on it and scheduling of lights to go on and off. And you can put these around. You can actually control multiple of these with your device. So you can have some of them, say if you had multiple trees around a dance floor, you could have them go around and you could set it up so that, say, channel E on each one would go on for, you know, maybe that was your, your oh God, goodness, I'm really, but maybe that's your old vertigos and you want to use them again. So your vertigos all go on. Then you can shut that off and maybe you wanted to go to a D on the right side. You can have it set up so the D would go on, whatever. There's just so much you can do with it because they have really, you know, once you go I'm into gonna, that digital. I'm going to dummy down the use for you because this is the way it is. When I... Most of my dances I do, the smaller ones, are audio-activated lights only, no DMX. But when I get to a slow dance, all the activated lights are still going nuts. But with yep. this, I can easily clip those off and just put one simple little star thump, something or other you know, that, that makes it look like a slow dance. Yeah, and then when it comes back on, click the other ones back on. Exactly, and let them go crazy because it's all all right there. And and again, it's wireless, so you have a range with that. It's really a neat little system. We'll, we'll have to we'll watch for the pictures from Arnaldo's bedroom with his Mario people when they've got the lights going on. Yeah, that's 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 another show. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we've got about five left. The Chauvet DJ had the Swarm Wash FX. Now the Swarm Wash. If there's there's multiple different versions of the swarm and the swarm and you're seeing these this from a couple of different companies. This is the FX is a little bit different because it has inco incorporated a wash. If you see those red circles all the way around, it is giving us a wash, and I believe it's RGB, red, green, blue, and UV on the outer circle. There is UV on it, but I just don't know if there's a white in there too. Then in the the kind of rectangular areas, you're getting a beam effect, and I believe that's RGB, and that might be white. So red, green, blue, white. Then in the middle of it, the very very middle, you're getting a a, a laser right there. Get it down there. You've got a little laser, and then around that you have a strobe. Those little LEDs, little white, are all strobes. And what's cool about it is we have these linked together, and they're running an auto program. Those little strobes, will, they can chase, and they'll flash, and they'll do some alternating things with that. The lasers will go, and and it's really, I I. I think this is going to be a real winner for DJs because now you've got that wash effect that you like with your floods. You've got some beaming effect. You've got the ability to have some strobe, which you probably won't use at weddings, but you can turn those lights, all those white on if you're controlling it individually, and you can have kind of a wash on the floor if you need to brighten the dance floor for something. So I think the swarm wash effects is definitely going to be a hot light. They it, it works for the kind of stuff that I do where that one light now gives me a wash, a motion, and some and some flashy flare. Yeah, all all in one thing. Exactly, one of them. So really, two two Did of those. You say a laser in the center. Is that correct? That is correct. Yep. Yeah. So that's right there. I, that's the whole. Put two of those, and it's going to replace four of mine. Yeah, exactly. I just cut my my lighting in half for for that type of thing to wash into motion. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's a, I think it's cool. really I think that adding the wash is definitely a great idea. You know if that's out yet? Or? Uh no no it's just I think it was just introduced so it's probably going to be a couple months out on that one yet. 
Uh, the next is Rain. The Rain MP 2014. <laughs> this is a, a, ro- a, a rotary mixer. And the biggest claim to fame, I think, with this particular mixer is that the the quality of the inner components are above probably most mixers that we're used to. The guys put the technology and the the things in there with you've got the the different uh, frequency cuts to go from zero to to one hundred on those things, so you can actually do a full cut at every at every level of that. And those are things that you just you, you don't see in a lot of boards. I was standing there talking, uh, just finished up with the the interview of the guy, and I was standing back as he was talking to someone else, and another guy came up behind me and, and basically made the statement that, you know, real DJs couldn't use this because there's no crossfader, which I thought was actually kind of funny because the gentleman who was demonstrating on it was scratching and mixing, and he was doing a very, very good job of being a real DJ, I thought. It's intended because I uh, also want to point out that this is not the only one they have out. Yes. They out one last year. And it's really Here's where the confusing part gets in. The Rain, um, they're the two of them together. The one on the left came out last year. The one on the right just came out this year. Last year's was the MP2015 come out in 15, and the MP2014 came out in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Going back. Uh, just double the everything. Like... E- e- it is like you said, intended for higher quality. So it's you know it's not going to be the average thing. You're not going to see this. I, I honestly believe you're not going to see it as a DJ thing. You're going to see it as a tie-in point for other things. Even though it can be used, I'm not saying it can't be. But because of the price, the one on the left is running three thousand dollars. So the one on the right, the new one, is going to be a little lower, but still, that's a lot. You know, to have as your you know, I don't know. I think it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that's going to be what a lot of DJs. I think it's there's a very narrow market for that, but that's that's yeah, my it's, uh, two two deck mixing with uh, additional USB X, uh, two aux line ins, one on each channel, three audio playback, five stereo record channels on each USB port, mic inputs, FX loops, etc. So it's really intended to be tied into a lot. And then the four the the 2015 from last year is double all that. So. When, one of the questions I did ask MJ on this one is if, because it can you can switch sources on that, and if a person could have one computer hooked up, because it has two computer uh, USB inputs, if one computer could be performing and then they could be switching out the second one, as we've talked about on other controllers, mm-hmm. and that being a big thing, and that's, that is designed for that also. Right. So it can be switched live. It's interesting. It's not for everybody. Um, you know, it's me. I kind of look at it and shake my head, and it's all about that, the novelty factor, I think. Even though it's a quality piece of equipment, I'm not knocking it saying it's cheap, but a really small market audience. For I, I, I think you're right on that one. Okay, we've got four left here, and then we'll – actually, three left here, and then we'll we'll be uh, ready for Jason in just a few minutes. Um, Denon, uh, we mentioned this last night, the VL12 turntable, the new turntable that uh, Denon came out with. They came out with some new gear at the show. They came out with a new controller, which we've talked about. You guys got to see that, the, the uh, MCX-8000. And the VL12 is going to be, I think, a... I, I think in many ways it's going to be right up there well, as this conversation with the techniques coming back out. I think in many ways the VL12 is going to maybe not steal that thunder, but it's going to stand up very well for itself it seems to be a really solid piece that they put together and I'm, I'm excited for when i get the production the final production ones ready to go and to uh, hear what guys like mj who have a longer history of working with with tables than i what they're thinking of it i can honestly tell you what i think will make it sell if it's cheaper than the techniques cheaper than used techniques not yeah. not the new ones that they just released I, I think that's probably a very good point. A, a, but I don't think it'll be cheaper than that. I'm, I'm going to guess. Yeah. Again, a, I think we're back to a small audience. Yeah, it very well could be, and I don't remember. Part, like you just have to look at uh, the most the majority of the DJs that use the turntables and the DVS systems are not the 40 plus year olds doing weddings. They're club guys in college or, or just starting out in life. They don't have all that extra money, you know. So they're they're not going to be able just to throw several thousand into. Each turntable doubled, and then buy another, you know, two thousand dollar rain mixer to go with that. Yeah, and I'm not seeing any pricing online. I just thought I would check and see. If no, anyone... there was no pricing on this. I looked on this specifically, and other people asked me even. So. Okay, so let's continue on here. Uh, we got a couple. Let's see, Pioneer. Pioneer, of course, came out with the new powered speakers, the XPRS speaker line, which includes uh, two-way tops, powered tops, high-powered tops. 
and they have the sub. Um, and the sub is actually the one MJ. If you, if you're, I which, have all of them, so it's going to take me a minute to. Yep. Scroll okay. Go ahead. The sub. Here we go. The, the sub, sub okay. is the the interesting one, I think, of this configuration because I think the tops, you know, they're from what we're seeing in specs and such, they're they're really really showing some good specs some some sound pressure and and handling and such but if that that 18 inch sub is what i want to do uh if we can if we can pop that one that's up. the back of the sub or the bottom however can, you want to say that. yeah uh, i'd like to see the front of it if we possibly could and if your picture shows that pop me up to full screen oh crap i'm, I'm sharing and it's not even <laughs> <laughs> i'm showing you all these pictures there we go. Look how cool it is and, and i'm not even sharing it yeah because so, there's the there's the front oops yep large thank you Sorry. Yeah. Now, what this is is it actually has two drivers in it, compared to many subs that that only have one. It's a heavy, it's a beast, but yes. it has two drivers in this thing, which is in in that line is going to really it's going to make a thump beyond what atypical because they've got it ported and they've got the angles and they're basically uh, probably the closest that that just you know that what people would be familiar with is the uh, Serwin vega earthquake the way those were ported and tuned and such i think that this is following that concept i'm really i'm, I'm excited to hear that in a large situation where they can just really make those things buck that could be a uh, a very very cool very cool speaker sub like that is a serious thing that's 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 gonna kick two of those especially. Oh yeah, for sure. You put that two of those together, and you're, there's the tops. Yeah, you're going to be, you know, putting maybe two fifteens above that sub, uh, like above one sub. Teens here, which are which? Because I have them all numbered, and I can't remember what they're numbered now. Yeah, that looks like the twelve. Mm -hmm. One of the things, of course, is you look at that that horn. They were talking about that it has a very very wide but narrow, shallow, short. Anyway. It, it, it's a very wide dispersion, but it doesn't have a lot of, of high. In this particular case, the way the, the tweeter set or the horn is set, it doesn't have a, a high top to bottom. But it can also be turned if you're going to be using it as a monitor, which is kind of a more a more popular thing nowadays to be able to have your your high horn turned for depending upon the application. I apologize. I don't have these. No, that's good. You, you've got, you've done with a, better numbers so that yep. I can say this is the 15. This is the this. this yeah, is the, no, that's fine. That's, that's good. So that's, this is the 12. I do have that. That's yep. the 12. That's the 12, yep. That's the 15. That's the back of the 15. Then the subs. So we got the 12, back of the 12, 15, back of the 15, sub. Is that back? That would that would be back. Has it setting on the floor? Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. That would be yeah sitting on the floor before transport, and then you tip it up. Yeah, so. you flip it up to transport. It. Okay, let's Sorry, let's wrap up. We've got. We've got two things left. Uh, the last one is the Mackie Reach. We talked about this last night in uh, the, the with Arnaldo. We talked about uh, the Reach. The Reach what, is. What do you want to start with? Because I have the, all of the pictures in better detail tonight. Oh, well, let's just put them up. Let's just talk last about. Last night was terrible. I, I, had, I had like not very good. There, this, there. This shows the range first. So what you're seeing on the right of this this image is the little the spot where that little speaker was. We really couldn't see that last night. It's below that control. That control area is is to do some manual control. You can do a little bit there, but the bulk of this is controlled by an app and you, by your phone. Yep, there we go. There's a the little speaker. Now that there's a little speaker on both sides. You can either enable both of those or disable one or both of those. So you've got the ability to have that 220 degree dispersion on that. And that was a shot. Yeah, I was showing it with those yep, on. That's go. how far yep. your dispersion is. So that is that's they refer to that as a personal monitor area. So that'll be kind of interesting to see how that is. And on the left, if you look at the left speaker in this 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 uh, shot, you can see that the cones. You've got one that's faced, you know, in, one's straight out, and one's towards the outside. The idea again is they wanted to have a wide dispersion kind of line array effect with that. And there's a better shot of the way they've got the the. That's um, the way they're horns. sitting in the front, underneath the uh, screen. Under the grill there, yeah. yeah. So that's that's that is a, a very cool system that can be controlled, as you see, by by the your device. So in this particular case, they're controlling it with an iPhone, but could be done with a a tablet. And you can set limiting and gains and different things and volume levels and and EQing and really to contour your sound depending upon what you're doing. So I think it's going to be a very a very cool box if those little side monitors can hold out. My only question that is is because as a DJ, 
who monitors, like I said, I'm mixing and monitoring all the time, and I complain about like the Bose speakers have a horrible bleed back. And to me, saying that that is a monitor for me to hear, it's not. It's a bleed back. For me to have one, it needs to be zero distance from me so I can hear it hitting me. So having yeah. those out here and saying I'm monitoring off something that's eight feet away from me, it, we're not going to use it as a monitor. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be. I it's think the be loud bleed to us, and we're going to like let's turn that off. But that's yes. part of the people. If you don't, if you're not one that needs to mix and cue, it might make it sound great. Yeah, I think if you're if you're a KJ host where you're doing the the type of shows where you have people singing to the words that are going across the screen that is related to the music that is played without lyrics being sung. <laughs> Karaoke. <laughs> Who, who say it that way, or karaoke, if you are a friend of John's. <laughs> but if you're a karaoke host, the that's I think that's where that's that's going to Never be. Never even thought yeah. of that. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but beyond that, I don't I don't know if it's really going to be a, a, an actual. Uh, one last thing before we bring Jason on is the thing that was out there that I didn't know existed until I went looking for pictures earlier today was from American Audio, and American Audio on their site is showing some new speakers. We've talked about the CPX speakers, which is we've we've tested those in the office against actually some of the more expensive, uh, better named I'm going to call it, and I only see better name because people refer to that that look at that company speaker company as a great name in the industry. Uh, we've we've compared those side by side a 15 inch from that company to a 15 inch in the American Audio CPX, and the CPX actually sounded better. This is the CPX 18 inch subwoofer. They have a 15 and an 18 inch subwoofer. 15 inch subwoofer. I, I can bring it up. I didn't I didn't see these at uh, at NAM. I don't know if they didn't have them ready to go, but wow, the the CPX speakers. We've been really happy. We've used these. Um, at different events, we actually used the CPX speakers on our. We we did some work with uh, Articat snowmobiles, where we had sound in their booths, and they were traveling around the country with these CPX speakers, and they worked worked wonderfully, and they sounded great. But you're going to tell me that you you strapped one to a, to a snowmobile? <laughs> no, no, we didn't. We didn't strap one to a snowmobile. We did. We did strap. They were or they were hung or flown on trussing, and and again, they did a wonderful job. And and price wise, you know, for the the power and such it was you know just uh, really only bottoms great that's all they showed they the tops came out i think last year the year before okay, okay. so the cpx tops in it and the cpx i believe there's an eight i'm not sure if there's an eight but there's a 10 12 and, and 15 there might be an eight too yeah there is an eight so they've got all four and now they've got the subs so i'm really really interested to hear how those mesh with those tops so mm -hmm. so that's it ladies and gentlemen that is our our look at the my top 18 <laughs> <laughs> for Nam, we'll be at top forty here in about ten minutes. <laughs> exactly, I do. we're just going to keep on going. So we're going to have videos of pretty much everything we've talked about, except that subwoofer, and then hundreds more. I mean, the uh, that uh, Jeremy and Ken and myself, we are out there and shooting a lot of a lot of stuff. So a lot of great stuff at Nam, and we'll be getting that information out. MJ, you've been putting a lot of stuff out there, so you can go out to the Rewind Reports Facebook page, check that out. And that is great, great stuff. If there's anything that you guys want to hear, see us or, or, or us to give detailed talks about, let us know. Say, hey, what about this? And we can try to get you all kinds of information and do maybe a show on it or a special or or just ramble endlessly into a Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> into a Snapchat. <laughs> uh, I've got 15 just... seconds to tell you about everything right now, and here's the speaker, and then we're going to do this and that. I think I could do it. There's times where I feel like I'm doing this. <laughs> Thank you